Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Everton show. Now an FA Cup tie against Grimsby Town way back in 1935 was the last time Everton won a game by six goals to three before last Saturday. Of course, what an amazing afternoon at Goodison Park. It was a game that had just about everything and importantly kept Everton's European chase firmly on track. To assess that win and much, much more besides, it's a pleasure to welcome the Diamond Graham Stewart and our assistant manager, Erwin Koeman. Erwin, welcome to the Everton sofa. Perfect time to get you on because the team is in such excellent form. Yeah, uh, what you said, uh, it was an excellent game on, uh, on Saturday. Nine goals. So, very pleased for the fans that they see a tremendous game. And of course, the last ten minutes were amazing. Uh, they came back till 3-2. Uh, so, it was uh, finally 6-3. Fantastic. It was a fantastic afternoon. We'll speak a lot more about that. And we'll be learning a lot more about Erwin Kuhn. And, of course, his younger brother as we progress through this week's programme. We'll also have time for these as well. He's got round the goalkeeper. And this is a six for Everton. Ross Barkley on the mark. Celebrated before he put the ball in the net. He has the knowledge. He has the experience being a manager. And, and that's... All together, is that really important for, for our technical staff? Fantastic. You look at season ticket sales, they're fantastic as well. Uh, you know, and it's really, really important that we look after them as much as we can because they've been really loyal to us. So it's nice to put on little events like this as well. So I'm just glad to, to have helped the team out and, and um, being able to, to get the results we, we have done, yeah. Plenty to come then, but there's only one place to start this week's show. Last Saturday was only the sixth time in the Premier League that Everton have scored at least six goals in a single game. To the existing list of Swindon Town, West Ham United, Sunderland twice and Southampton, you can now add the name of AFC Bournemouth. Since defeat at Watford in mid-December, Everton's response has been emphatic. Six wins, two draws and just one defeat in the Premier League have reignited the club's ambitions of European qualification. On Saturday afternoon, Ronald Koeman's men extended their unbeaten league run to seven matches, while Romelu Lukaku moved from five goals behind Duncan Ferguson's club Premier League goal-scoring record to just one. Back in September, Koeman bemoaned Everton's sluggish start at Bournemouth's Vitality Stadium. There was no such problem here. Six Premier League games without defeat. Looking to push towards Europe, and what a start! Romelu Lukaku, 30 seconds on the clock. Lukaku's first goal was the fastest scored at Goodison in the Premier League era, eclipsing David Unsworth's strike against Fulham in March 2002 by just two seconds. It was a 14th of the season for the Belgian, and he added another before the break, but not before the less likely figure of James McCarthy opened his own account for the campaign. Lukaku squeezed his way between two and pulled it back from McCarthy, and it's in! He was giving it straight to Lukaku, a real chance, and it's taken brilliantly by Romelu Lukaku. 3-0 ahead at the break, Everton were cruising, but then... And here's Josh King to get one back. Everton must uh, concentrate and stay on guard here, because Bournemouth have got another. Josh King really has got Bournemouth back into this game now. Goodison was stunned, but in Lukaku, the Blues had a weapon firing on all cylinders. Two goals in two minutes eased the shredded nerves. Coleman's oh, cut back, Lukaku! Patrick! Lukaku. Lukaku. He's got a four! Romelu Lukaku's day! There was still time for Harry Arter to net a controversial third for Bournemouth. But four minutes into added time, Goodison rose to an unusual sight. A celebration before a goal. Good for Barkley, he's onside, he's got round the goalkeeper, and this is a six for Everton. Ross Barkley on the mark, celebrated before he put the ball in the net. The final whistle brought a close to an enthralling encounter. A buoyant Koeman somehow finding the perfect word to sum up the drama he had witnessed. Crazy game, crazy game of football. During the game, uh, different systems uh, for both teams, change system, change system, and, and it was really a tactical battle. 
but uh, they uh, they came back in the game uh, with really good football and they make it really difficult. I think we dropped a little bit intensity after half time, 3 0 up. But okay, uh, the reaction after 3 2 was good. Uh, back to the five defenders that uh, brought us uh, back the, the domination in the game and we scored great goals uh, today. For the man of the match, poor goals to reflect on. That ever nearing club scoring record and a new position as the Premier League's leading scorer too. I think in the dressing room that's what we said, we needed, we needed to come out flying. We, we worked on it the whole week and uh, the players were there, we were sharp and uh, you know, it was good to score uh, after 30 seconds. Then we continued, uh, continued pressing, playing good football going forward and you know, the 3-0 at halftime was good. You have to believe in, uh, in your ability and believe that you can catch the, the team uh, ahead of you and we need to win games, we need to keep on winning and keep on working hard for, for each other and hopefully we can uh, catch Manchester United and maybe the team above them. Romelu showed again today that he is uh, maybe the best of one of the best finishers in football because uh, what he showed today was uh, really outstanding. Rejuvenated since the turn of the year and bolstered by the signings of Morgan Schneiderlin and Adamula Lukman, a full debutant against the Cherries, Koeman's men remain the top flight's form side. Final score here, Everton 6, Bournemouth 3. Do you agree with Ronald's assessment, Graham, that it was a crazy afternoon? Well, it turned out to be, didn't it? But... You know, at half time, I didn't think any any of us thought it was going to be as crazy as it turned out. I mean, it was a, a fantastic start to the game, a brilliant finish by Romelu for the first goal, and that got us off to the ideal start, settled any nerves that potentially we had. And I thought some of the football we played in that first 45 minutes was excellent. So to walk in 3 0 up, I didn't see 6 3 coming, and I'm sure most people didn't see it, but uh, football can be like that sometimes. What do you say as a coach to players at half-time, Erwin, when you're so comfortable? It was 3-0, we were cruising. What do you say to the players? No, it's, it's obvious that uh, you have to play 45 minutes more. And, uh, and we know football. Everybody knows football. It can change in a split second. And uh, the manager told the boys, uh, play for, uh, for the 4-0, and then the game is over. But if they make 3-1, the game is open again. And uh, it happened, and uh, we were... We were not uh, chasing on the midfield anymore. We were, we were not pressing on the midfield, what we did in the first half, and they make some mistakes and we make the goals. We drop in and we give them the time and, uh, and, and space to play. And they can play very good football. Uh, so they came back to 3-2. Uh, but finally, uh, uh, they show again uh, a great spirit to finish 6-3. But even uh, with 3-0 up, you don't sit uh, comfortable <laughs> as a coach. That's the Everton way, you'll get used to that. <laughs> Especially when it went to 3 2, there was a bit of panic in the stadium, Gray. Yeah, I think there was. Obviously, there's a little bit of nervousness flying around, but as Erwin said, the lads showed great character to dig in again. I mean, you've got to look at Bournemouth as well. They probably come out second half and play with an air of freedom as well, mm. because it can't possibly get any worse for them. So that, that freedom sometimes can release you to, to play some exciting football. And, you put that together with the reasons Irwin's just explained and all of a sudden they're back in the game. But uh, ultimately we've got another you know, really important three points under our belt. Romelu Lukaku scored four goals there and made the headlines. They were four good goals, weren't they? Good sense of forward finishes. Yeah, but OK, we see, of course, uh, Romelu every day on the pitch and uh, his finishing uh, around the 80-yard box and in the 80-yard box is amazing and maybe he's the best in the world of that. And, uh, but uh, I like very much the, the fourth goal. Uh, it was a good combination. Uh, uh, and Seamus came on on the right side, could cross. And uh, finishing was fantastic. Uh, but uh, we can play very good football and we, uh, we can make goals. And that's, that's important. Uh, we make now six goals. Uh, that's a lot. But we always, as, as coaches, we are uh, always critical. Because you concede three goals as well. And that's too much. Mm. If you m uh, make three calls as a away team, you expect to win. But OK, uh, you, they concede six. But three is a little bit too much. And, uh, but we have to uh, develop that. That's the perfectionist attitude of a coach, isn't it? Right, time for a short break right now. When we return in a few short minutes, we'll speak a lot more to Erwin Koeman and Graeme Stewart. And we'll also hear from the Everton manager, who gives us the lowdown on his older brother. Erwin will enjoy that, I'm sure. I hope he will anyway. We'll see you in a couple of minutes.
Welcome back. Now, very shortly, we'll be speaking to Erwin Kuhlman about what makes his younger brother tick. But we thought we'd let the boss have the first word. This is Ronald Kuhlman on Erwin Kuhlman. Erwin is really uh, that person who is really happy and, 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 and comfortable on the background. The players like him. Uh, he's always doing extra training work uh, on the pitch. And, and, and his job as an assistant manager is really good because he likes it, he, he has the knowledge, he has the experience being a manager and, and that's all together is that really important for, for our technical staff because there are more people in that staff and, and we are working really great together. And what was Erwin like as a, as a footballer? Now, when he was young he was offensive midfield player, he was really uh, with a lot of dribbles, he was really good left-footed and uh, he was nice to watch and, and, and when he getting older he became more a defensive role on the midfield and, and as you know he played in the 88 the Euros, he played more left full back, more left defensive midfield and, uh, and he had a lot of qualities and, 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 he had a re and he was a winner, he was aggressive, sometimes uh, too much Sometimes too much talking to the referees, too much yellow cards, but he is, he is a winner. And, and that's, that's, I think, uh, the family Kuman. And, and finally, can you remember the first time you played alongside him at junior level, whether it was your local club? Yeah, the, what, I think I was uh, seven, eight years old that we played together in, uh, in an amateur club in, in Groningen in Holland. And uh, he played on the left side on the midfield, I was playing on the right side on the midfield. And, we're scoring a lot of goals together and uh, it was really nice and, and we played together on the amateur level, we played together on the professional level and uh, it was nice to play with your brother. Erwin, uh, well, let's go back to the very, very beginning of your story and Ronald's story of course. How big an influence was your father because he was an international footballer himself? Yeah, we were born with the ball, <laughs> both of us. So. Uh... Ah, my parents, they had a big influence in us, of course, and uh, from the beginning on it was uh, obvious that we liked to play football. My father was uh, semi-professional and uh, my mother was uh, uh, always making the food, um, uh, uh, wash the dirty clothes, etc., etc. So, uh, but it was an amazing time. Uh, we played a lot of times uh, from our six till 13. We Played together in the same team, so it was very nice. Were you like the, the kids in England? Did you play in the street until it went dark and play in the local yeah, park? Yeah. Twenty aside, as we said last week. Yeah, we uh, in that time uh, you can uh, you, you could play on, on the street because there were not many cars, and you have a lot of space. And uh, we play on the street, on 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 some pitches behind uh, our house, uh, and uh, with a lot of friends. And uh, it was very nice. And it, uh, we always came from school and play on, on the street. Many, many world-class footballers over the years, Graham, have honed their skills on the streets, kicking the ball against the kerb. Yeah, I think we're all pretty much the same animal, aren't we? I mean, I, my father was semi-professional, played at Dulwich Hamlet. Um, my mum washed the clothes as well. And all the... <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and the same, yeah. same thing, yeah. out the back garden, down the alleyway, and luckily enough, I had a recreational ground at the back of me um, that backed onto my local primary school. So I'd go out, come home from, from school again, play football, and then when it was going dark, my mum would appear at the top of the alleyway and shout to me to come in and yeah. uh, it's tea time sort of thing. So we're all, yeah. we've all done the same yeah. things. And you, your original bleep test was with the lamppost, wasn't it, in the street? I remember you telling me. Well, I used, to, I used to run home from school. I used to have a mate of mine and we used to run home from school and we'd go, stop, go to a lamppost, walk a lamppost, run two lamppost, <laughs> stupid little things like that, and <laughs> test yourself how quick it used to take you to get home from school. When did you sign for your first club? Uh, when I was 17 years, uh, I'm uh, sorry, I was 16, uh, FC Groningen, where we grew up, mm -hmm. uh, the team where my father was playing. And uh, I had uh, an amateur contract, so I get some uh, very small money. But my first uh, professional contract I signed in 79 in PSV Eindhoven. When I was 17 years, I moved from Groningen to Eindhoven. And uh, I signed there my first professional contract for three years. You say you joined Groningen at 
17. It's quite late, isn't it, when you consider that some of the boys who come to Everton are 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 years of age. Yeah, but you cannot compare the, the, the late 70s, 80s with now, uh, this time. Because I played till my 16th in an amateur club. Mm -hmm. And then I went to FC Groningen, the professional football club. So, but in that time, they do, do, do not have the under 8 or under 10 or under 12. It was much, much later. And, uh, but it was totally different. What, what age did you join Chelsea? I joined Chelsea at 14. Um, I mean, we had the freedom then to pretty much tra train anywhere when I was probably 11, 12, 13. So I'd go to Arsenal on a Monday, Wimbledon on a, on a Wednesday, Palace on a Thursday and Chelsea on a Friday evening as well. But it, it was 14 when you had to make your final decision and sign associate schoolboy forms, which was a two year period, 14 to 16. So I joined there because I loved it at Chelsea. And then apprenticeship from 16 to 18 and in turn pro. Was there a rivalry between yourself and, and Ronald as you were growing up? No, no, not on that time. Uh, I'm one and a half year older than Ronald and uh, I moved uh, from my 14 on to a higher, uh, higher class of football. Uh, the, the older uh, age, I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, so then, uh, then uh, it split. We split together. And uh, finally, we came together in, in, in 82 in FC Groningen. We played one year together, but there was no rivalry. Uh, later on, we play a lot of time against us. And of course, <laughs> then you like to win uh, against each other and you make uh, tackles to each other. And uh, <laughs> oh, it was a good time. <laughs> Did you ever kick him? Yes, but he kicked me as well. <laughs> and good. <laughs> it must have been yeah. terrific for you and Ronald to play together for that season. It must have been wonderful for your family playing for your local team. Yeah, but uh, we, we were ending the, the fifth place and we kept European football. And then Ronald moved to, uh, to Ajax. I stayed there. And, uh, but it's amazing if you uh, play together on, on the midfield and you had a fantastic season. And uh, on that moment, you don't realise. But it's, you realise one year or two years later, you realise that it was unique. At FC Groningen, there's a Cooman stand, so the boys must have done something right, Graham. Oh, very much. Oh, well, that's there for all to see, isn't it? I mean, Cooman's a, a world-renowned name, isn't it? So, uh, and not just Ronald Irwin as well. My Everybody father, and your father, father as well. Also. So, I mean, it's you know, I mean, terrific players. Um, you know, Ronald is the man who obviously gets the headlines of the majority of the time, but. You know, yep. the, the Koemans were a, a, clearly a good breed. Mm -hmm. Ronald always says that Johan Cruyff, the late great Johan Cruyff, was a big influence on him. Was he the same for most people involved in professional football in Holland? Yeah, I think he was his time ahead. And, uh, and in Holland, we, we like to attack. Uh, we, were, we grow up uh, most in a 4-3-3 system uh, with wingers. And, uh, uh, and always we, we, we train on, on pass and drills, play on the good foot. Uh, your first touch is the most important to play, to play on. And uh, we do it the same in Everton as well. And, uh, but that is our philosophy about, about football. Uh, take initiative, uh, ask for the ball if you are free, uh, play forward your first, first pass, try to play forward. And I think that's very important in football and, 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 and enjoy the football. Don't uh, drop in too much, but press and make the opponent difficult and uh, get them difficulties. That's the, our way of playing. It's a philosophy that's worked over the years. People of our era, Graham, have often enjoyed watching your Ajaxes, your PSV Eindhoven's, your Feyenoord's and, of course, the national team. Yeah, very much so. I mean, Holland were a terrific national side. I mean, they've won the European Championships when I was growing up as a kid. But, you know, I, as soon as we met Ronald and Irwin and they talked about, you know, their ideas of playing football, I knew it was going to suit Evertonians <laughs> because we like to see people on the front foot. We like to see pressing. We like to see tackles. We like to see good, attractive football. And, that, you know, it's, it's there for us now. You can slowly see that in the six months that the lads have been here, it's starting to develop now. And all of a sudden, what they're trying to implement is just second nature to the players now. It's a visible difference from the start of the season to, to where we are now. And it's uh, the improvements there for everybody to see. Hopefully it will continue. You played football at the highest level, uh, when the very highest level. When did you first start to think about a career in coaching? Uh, at the end of my career, when I was 36, uh, I got the possibility to, to be the coach of the under-21s in PSV Eindhoven. And... Uh, 
I, I stopped with football on, in, in 1998 in Groningen. And then uh, I moved back to PSV Eindhoven as a coach. And uh, I did it for two years, uh, the, the, the under-21s. And then uh, I, I, I could be the, the, the assistant manager of uh, Eric Gerrits, the Belgian uh, player, and uh, Gus Hiddink. Mm. So uh, I, I was four years there. And then after that, I st stepped out and uh, I became a manager. Some big names to learn from there, isn't it? It wasn't for you, that coaching Lark Green, was it? No, I spent enough years out in the cold at uh, Fields there, so I'm, I'm quite happy where I am now, thank you very much. <laughs> Football's lost, I think. Right, we're going to take another quick breather now, and in part three, we'll turn our attention to the under-23s, and we'll catch up with the former Dutch international, Audrey van Tegelen, who knows the Koeman brothers very well indeed. Welcome back to part three. Now, back in 1988, the Netherlands won the European Championships in Germany in magnificent style. Names like Hullet, Van Basten, Wouters, Rijkaard swept all before them, accompanied, of course, by Ronald and Erwin Koeman, and also by Adrie van Tegelen, then with Anderlecht. Van Tegelen played alongside Erwin Koeman at club level as well as international level, and we caught up with him recently at his home in Holland. First off, we asked him what he thought of Erwin Koeman, the player. Uh, yeah, Erwin was an, uh, a good, uh, a good player, uh, a good, uh, good uh, long ball, a good uh, left winger. He uh, was a, a technical uh, man for for a team, uh, for us. He he was uh, a good fighter, in, an Eng English fighter. Yeah, he fight and uh, it was a good man for for the team. And what about Ronald Adri? Ronald, yeah, Ronald was a. Uh, he had an, uh, a good shot. I think that R Ronald not a player was for uh, for England, more for uh, for France, for the Dutch. Uh, he he was not uh, so fighter as uh, as Erwin uh, was. He was more the the, the, the beautiful man. <laughs> well, I'm sure Erwin will dispute that one, uh, Adri. But you played with both Erwin and Ronald in the European Championships in 1988. Tell us about that summer. The tournament is uh, is long. It's, it's five to six games, and uh, sometimes you uh, you have luck. For us, in that year, it was a beautiful uh, champions champion. And what about the game against England? The three-one win, a hat trick for Van Basten. What do you remember about that one? <laughs> it's, it's a long time ago, but uh, yeah, it was uh, not so an uh, so an easy game. Uh, eh? England have uh, in the beginning and uh, a lot of uh, chances. And uh, we making later uh, the yeah the goals. When you look back on that tournament, Hadri, it must be one of the highlights of your career. Yeah, that that's true. And uh, and the rest of your, your life is is that the uh, the moment that uh, that you not uh, forget. And it was some goal, wasn't it, from Van Basten? Yeah, it was a nice uh, nice goal, a nice uh, nice ball, and uh, he uh, he make him uh, beautiful. Finally, Adri, you had Ronald Koeman to your right. You had Erwin Koeman in front of you during that tournament. How much of a help was that for you as a left back? Yeah, it was it was for me uh, good. Uh, with uh, Ronald of Erwin, uh, you can uh, play the ball uh, to uh, one of the two, and uh, that was uh, no problem uh, for uh, for the two boys. Adri van Tegelen, there, Erwin, your former teammate at club and international level. Is he right? Were you the fighter, and Ronald was the beautiful one? Yeah, but Ronald was also a fighter. I was a fighter. Uh, Ronald was done the centre back, mm. and uh, uh, he was a lot of times coming up uh, forward uh, with or without ball. He had a fantastic pass, and uh, and I was uh, left midfield or left winger or defensive midfield. So I had to make more duels, more battles. So, uh, but Ronald was also a fighter and sometimes mean as well, and uh, you have to be because uh, it's you or him. And it's a battle. Uh, but finally, we get the trophy, and that was the most important, and uh, we will never forget. He's right, isn't he? Whatever position you play, if you're at the top level, you've got to have a little bit of an edge to you, surely. Of course you've got to have an edge. I mean, and that's, that's what you want. As a, as a supporter, you want to see your players who've got a little bit of feistiness about them. Um, you know, and, and that, some, that can get lost in translation sometimes because people see you battling away and mm. having that characteristic of being a, a tackler and a fighter. But 
you know, they lose sight of the fact that technically you're a very, very good player as well. And going forward, you can do every bit as, good, uh, as well as the beautiful player. But there's nothing wrong with having a little bit of fire in your belly. You enjoyed the phrase that Adri used there, an English fighter. Do you think you'd have liked to have played in the English game, Erwin? Yeah, but OK, it's not possible anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you look as if you could still play. Yeah, yeah, I still play, I still play, but uh, OK, it's uh, not uh, anymore in the, in the 80s or 90s. But uh, yeah, uh, I played five years in Belgium, uh, the rest of my life in, in Holland. So, uh, But uh, of course, uh, it was always in that time also interesting to play in England. And uh, uh, we watched at home uh, English football, uh, German football. Uh, so. But anyway, finally, we are here in the Premier League. That's, that's good. There wasn't much movement in your day, Graham, but would you have liked to have chanced your arm in another country? Um, difficult question. I mean, never, never really cropped up mm. in my career. I was, I was a bit of a home bird, always have been, to be totally honest with you. So, you know, I, I enjoyed playing in England. I've had a brilliant upbringing at Chelsea. Enjoyed my time at Everton immensely. Everybody knows that to be back here is as good as it gets for me. Um, and had a brilliant spell at Charlton as well when the club had come up from, you know, the battles that that club had had as well. You know, playing away at Upton Park and playing at uh, Sellers Park as well to battle themselves back to the Valley and be part of a story that saw Charlton finish sixth in the Premier League, seventh in the Premier League. I mean, it's unheard of. So, yeah, I, I had some good challenges along the way, but it was always on home soil. Let's just go back to the days of 1988 when you had your long hair, Owen. <laughs> Holland had... The misfortune to lose the World Cup final in 74, again in 78. How important was it for the country to win that trophy in 1988? Yeah, it was massive because it was in the, the country of the enemy. In that time, there, were, there was the enemy. Now, in this time, it's over. But in that time, and in 74, of course, we lost the final against Germany, West Germany. Mm. And, uh, but for a lot of people, the whole final, it was the final because we uh, beat Germany in Hamburg in their own uh, country, so for, f for a lot of people in Holland it was the final, but finally the final was against Russia and to get a trophy you have to beat them and finally we beat them 2-0, so it was, it was amazing and uh, we, made, we had a lot of celebration in Amsterdam and in uh, Eindhoven and on our way from Eindhoven to Amsterdam, it was amazing. And of course you beat England on the way as well, yeah. Marco van Basten Hattrick, what do you recall of that game? It was a difficult game because uh, England lost the first game. Uh, we lost the first game against Russia. So uh, we, we need a win, like England. 1-0 uh, up, and I think uh, Robson make 1-1. One, one. But we were the better team. But finally, in the second half, we make the 2-1 the, the and the 3-1. So for us, it was a relief that we win against England. And uh, one point against Ireland the next game, uh, we we would go through to the to the half final. So and finally we get a point against Ireland. So we go. Some centre forward, Marco van Basten, Graham. He wasn't too bad, was he? <laughs> Technically very, very good. I mean, he's always going to be remembered for the sen sensational goal he scored. I mean, the volley. I mean, everything about it, the technique, the strike, everything. Um, he, he was fit because he in uh, uh, in the previous weeks weeks he had an injury, and the first game he was also on the bench like me, mm. and after that he came in. What about he finishing, uh, I mean, like, you know, his technique finishing-wise, similar to someone like Romelu? I think Romelu is better yeah? in finishing. We'll take that Praise all day long, won't we? Yeah, I'm sure Romelu will as well. Right, several of our under-23 players secured themselves Football League loans during the January transfer window. It may have left David Unsworth with a slightly depleted squad, but it certainly hasn't put the team's search to the Premier League 2 title off balance. Their latest victims were Arsenal at Southport on Monday night. Everton under-23s regained their six-point lead at the top of the Premier League 2 table with a hard-fought 1-0 win over Arsenal at the Merseyrail Community Stadium. The young boys started brightly and went close to opening the scoring early on when Kieran Dowell forced a good save from goalkeeper Emiliano Martinez. On a wet and windy evening, the condition of the pitch worsened as the game went on and that perhaps played a part in Courtney Duffus spurning this chance midway through the second period. But after continuing to push forward, David Unsworth's side were eventually rewarded four minutes from time when Dowell found substitute Nathan Broadhead, who danced past his marker before firing into the bottom corner to earn a vital three points. Massive win, uh, great performance, uh, showed some great resilience, defended outstanding for 93 minutes, 94 minutes, um, and 
very, very proud of our place tonight because they were, you know, in, in really testing difficult conditions, they, they produced an Everton performance tonight and that makes me very proud. And looking at the goal at the end, uh, a great way to win it. We left it late, didn't we? Well, we did and we always knew it was going to be a tight game. Uh, Arsenal are a good team and, and it, it needed a, a moment of magic, a bit of genius. Um, you know, we thought uh, bringing Nathan on, uh, having Kieran off the sides coming into those pockets uh, would cause us some problems and, and, he, and, and it happened. Um, he got the ball in the pocket, Nathan, and he, he went on a great dribble and it's a great finish. And we know he's got that quality to do that. He's, um, he's, he's, a, he's a smashing player, Nathan, and uh, he's had to be really, really patient to get his opportunity in the under-23. So uh, I'm delighted he got his goal, but more importantly, I'm, de I'm delighted for the players that they got the win. Uh, well, it's been a terrific season already for the under-23s. You must be very excited by the, the young talent that we've got at the football club. Yeah, it's, uh, it's nice to see. But I always critical if I look to the under-23s because in that game, sometimes it's easy. But you have to look uh, to imagine uh, that they are playing in the first team, how they can react then. And for the moment, uh, Tom Davis is doing fantastic. Uh, uh, Lukman, a young guy, Mason, Holgate, and that's fantastic for Everton, also for the for the fans to see uh, the young boys. And and the coach is not the manager is not had not a fear to bring him in, mm. and that's and that's good. And that's also a little bit the Dutch way, and uh, and it's nice to see. And we have more talent players. Uh, I have to say, Matthew Pennington did very well on on, on last Monday. So we have a lot of talent. Which is certainly right, that's for sure. And that's the end of part three. Coming up in the fourth and final section of this week's show, we'll hear from the young man who can't stop making headlines, Tom Davis, and we'll show you what happened when Everton Football Club revived the television game show Family Fortunes. <laughs> Welcome back. Right, Family Fortunes. For Irwin's benefit, that was a cheesy television quiz show in the 80s and 90s, which people like me and Diamond watched every week. Well, we decided to reenact family fortunes in the beer keller earlier this week, and we invited over 100 season ticket holders along to watch the fun. The team captains were Diamond, Graeme Sharp, Michael Ball and Ronnie Goodless. And a good night was had by all, including Morgan Schneiderlin, who turned up to meet the supporters who he says have been so good to him since he arrived at the club. It's been a very nice few weeks and hopefully we'll continue, but um, I am very grateful to uh, have they uh, welcomed me in a, in a football club. It's been very nice. I've been, uh, I'm not been surprised because I've heard uh, only good things about them and uh, it's, a, it's a really a pleasure to, to play in front of them at Goodison and to play um, away because I, I think the, the game we played away, they've been terrific. So, so yeah, it's nice, you know, the fans are a very important part of uh, of football and it's very nice when you're a football player to uh, to have the backing of the fan. And yeah, it's, it's nice to see them. When you do this, you, you are very happy and like I say, they, they, when they sing your name and the thing is the least you can do as a football player. And it's good family fortunes, a couple of Everton questions in there. Uh, and a little bit of general knowledge as well. So listen, the most important thing is for the fans, uh, there's a good prize at the end of it, uh, of season tickets for next season. So I think that the, the fans are taking it serious. Uh, I'm not too sure if the ex-players are. They've been fantastic. You look at our season ticket sales, they're fantastic as well. Uh, you know, and it's really, really important that we look after them as much as we can because they've been really loyal to us. So it's nice to put on little events like this as well. Absolutely made up. I was really made up just getting invited, but to win it, that's brilliant. <laughs> uh, you know what? They should do more of these because this has been a really good night, and I think my kids are going to be made up as well. It's one extra season ticket for them. I'm a foster carer, so I haven't had the chance to go to any football games until this season. And as it worked out, the lad we've got now, he's okay, so I've been taking him all season, and he's made up. And, and I've got another lad just come in to live with us, and this will go to him. So it's been good all round. The 
things we get you to do on a Tuesday night, but it looked a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I mean, the atmosphere you could see there was, was you know, bustling, uh, exciting. I mean, terrific for the, for the three fans that have got the season tickets as well. The concept was to get the supporters in, give them the opportunity to win some season tickets for next season, to re reward their loyalty that mm. they show the club on a regular basis. So, uh, you know, Sharpie managed another little win there. He always gets <laughs> in the winning side, Sharpie, doesn't he? <laughs> he didn't look as if he was entirely sure that he'd won there, by the way. <laughs> Nice to see Morgan Schneider in there as well, Erwin, who already looks a quality footballer. Yeah, I think the advantage is that uh, we know him from Southampton. The first year we had uh, Morgan in the team and uh, he did very well. Good player, technical player. He can play box to box. He is mean at, at some time, uh, tactical, uh, strong. So it's, uh, I think for us, he's a brilliant player. Settled in straight away and the fans have taken to him. Well, they have, because they can see he gets himself about the pitch, makes tackles, interceptions, very composed on the ball as well. I thought his performance at Stoke was outstanding in a difficult environment to play in as well. And it's testament to the, the fitness of the man as well, because he hasn't played any football at Manchester United. And you know how difficult it is to just step out into the Premier League and, and look match sharp. But, you know, Morgan's looked terrific in the two games there, you know, the Stoke game and the Bournemouth one. And that, that, I'm just sure that's the beginning of something special for mm. him. Even he says there's more to come, so we're delighted with that. Right, the last word on this week's programme is with a young man who has burst onto the Premier League scene in the last month or so. With a distinctive look about him, Tom Davis clearly isn't afraid to express himself on or off the football pitch. We spoke to him earlier this week after he'd been named as the PFA Fans Player of the Month and the Match of the Day magazine Young Lion of the Month. It's been a good month and we've had a lot of good results and I've put in a few good performances myself so I'm just glad to, to have helped the team out and, and um, been able to, to get the results we, we have done. Yeah. When you received your uh, Match of the Day magazine you said it was something you used to read not that long ago. Do you, do you still yeah. have to pinch yourself to think that you've gone from reading it to featuring in it? Yeah, of course. Um, it's happened very quick for me and like I said, I used to read the magazine and and it, it's gone from that to being to being given an award by the magazine. So it's it's strange but definitely a, a great achievement for myself, yeah. Having talent like Morgan Schneiderlin, Gareth Barry, Idris Agana, this kind of talent, I mean, what's that do for your game? Yeah, definitely in training and you can see how good they are and in the games they, they help you out so much so it's just being around them and, and learning from them as much as I can really and I'm sure if I can pick points up from them then my game's only going to come on a lot, yeah. The team's in great form at the minute but a tough one at the weekend against the Middlesbrough side, desperate for points. Yeah, it's going to be a hard game like any but um, as you say with the way we've been playing and, and the way we know we can play and the players we've got now and the kind of relationships we're forming, I think it's one we've got to look to win, of course, and um, I don't think we can be happy with anything but a win, so um, it'll be a tough one, but we're, we're looking to get the three points, definitely. And the teams above us at the minute are winning, but do you still have eyes on top six this season? Of course, yeah. Um, it only takes a, a few slip-ups and we're, we're straight in there, so we'll just do everything we can to keep the pressure on and just wait for one of them to, to drop points and, and we'll be there to, to seize the chance. Great momentum really is a key word at the moment, isn't it? Everton are just building up some terrific momentum at just the right time. Yeah, we are. Um, the lads are playing with a lot of confidence, rightly so, after the performances of late. Uh, a terrific three-point Saturday, but a good point away at Stoke. And that's important because, as you mentioned, momentum is key. You know, if we don't, can't win a game of football, let's make sure we don't lose it. The level of expectation has been raised in recent weeks, Owen, with the quality of the performances. Middlesbrough away at the weekend and the Evertonians will go there expecting another win. Yeah, that's good and uh, I like that. But uh, on the other hand, uh, every game in, in, the, in the Premier League is very difficult. Everybody knows that. And you have to be 100% uh, to, to get a win. And you are willing uh, to work for each other. That's very important. If you show that, uh, and we always make a goal, so then uh, we can win there. But finally, first you have to fight for it. What have you made of the away support this season? The support at Goodison is always fantastic. The away fans are just something else, aren't they? Yeah, but because every uh, away game is sold out. And I think Everton is the only club in, in England who bring that kind of uh, numbers to the away game. So that's fantastic. And, and for that already, you have to work 100% for them and, uh, and you can win, you can lose, they know that as well, but 
you have to fight for it. And if you win, it's fantastic. If you lose, they will say, OK, we lose today, but we win next day, next week again, because if you fight like that, we will win. How many times have we said that? Yes, yeah, so every time we go away, don't we? I mean, the support is magnificent. Erwin's absolutely right. Um, you know, if we can get some kind of European football again next year, that would be absolutely terrific because, you know, we've talked about how, how well our supporters embrace <laughs> European football and European nights. They travel in their numbers. They enjoy themselves immensely. And, that, and that's what we've got to aim for as a football club. You know, why not? We're, we're five points behind Man United, six behind Liverpool. There's a chance. We've got a couple of nice, tasty games coming up. But first things first, let's go to Middlesbrough, put in a solid performance. We know we're going to create chances. If we're solid defensively, I believe we can pick up the three points. And already this season, early February, when we've won as many Premier League games as we did in the whole of last season, which shows a real tangible evidence that there's progression. We're on the right lines. Yeah, but then I think uh, we have to win more. And again, we are very critical as coaches every day because we can do better. Even now, we can do better. Uh, and you have to, to learn more, you have to develop yourself, you have to speak in the game with your mates, we have to do more than, for that. Uh, we can help each other more. And uh, if we are willing to do that, then uh, maybe uh, we get uh, high on the table. But you have to, to show that, because every game uh, the opponent will beat, like to, like to beat Everton. Because everybody is speaking about Everton, it's very nice. But the pressure will be a little bit higher, and that's good. We need that as well. Not an easy guy to please, Erwin Koeman, is he? No, and rightly so. But, you know, that, that's what drives the team on. You know, the, the players will appreciate the, the workload coming out of, 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 from all the coaches at the club. But there's also an inner strength and drive, clearly, from listening to Erwin and speaking to Ronald, that, you know, they're not going to accept good. They want very good. Mm. And when we've got very good, we want excellence. And that's what you've got to have all the way running through the football club. If we get that and we achieve that, all of a sudden you start picking trophies up. That's what we want to do ultimately. I'll ask you the final question, yes or no. Away win on Saturday? Yes. Absolutely, 100%. And that's just about it for this week's programme. Just one defeat in the last nine Premier League matches has left Everton on the cusp of the European places. This weekend we're off to the Riverside to see if we can shave a bit more off the gap between ourselves and the leading pack. We'll have all the reaction to the Middlesbrough game for you next week. My thanks to Graeme Stewart and, of course, to Erwin Koeman for joining us. We've enjoyed your company again too and we'll see you in seven days' time for another Everton show. Catch the lowdown for all your entertainment, culture and lifestyle from around Liverpool. At 6.30 and 9.30 every night, straight after the news.